We are going to walk through the process of initially getting started in signing up for the Arizona ESA program. First off, where do you go? This is the actual website, uh, Empowerment Scholarship Account Program, but you usually start where just about everybody does. Go to Google and type in Arizona, uh, Arizona ESA and boom, that first link on there will take you right to where I was, right? Because you'll never remember the URL, just Google it. Uh, so this gives you uh, a flyby. I'm sure this will change by the time you get there of what's going on. And you see this big button, apply now for the 20, well, it'll be whatever school year you are in. Now, ESA is not a new thing. It's actually an old thing. It was typically used for uh, students with disabilities or special conditions where they had to redirect state uh, tax dollars to those students. Now they have a program called Universal. So anytime you hear Universal, that's the program designated for you. A universal person taking Arizona's tax dollars to fund your child's education in a parent directed way, right? So you click on that and it will come up and say, do you have an active account? Now, if you do, you just click on yes and bam, it'll take you to this logon screen where this very familiar woman, I've seen her before, I don't know uh, where is, is on there, but in, uh, if you don't, which I'm assuming that's why you're at this video, you hit no and it'll have you create your account. This is where you fill out your info. All right, I filled it in. I used an obvious uh, test account name so the Arizona ESA folks can delete it afterwards. Phone number 8675309. Uh, put your email address in there. I'm putting a, a, an actual email in there because I wanna show you the email that it sends you. When you click on register, it will come up and say, go to your inbox. Let's go there. All right, and here you go, boom. One email in my inbox, I click at, congratulations, you now have an ADE, click on the verification link. It's gonna ask for the password that you would like to set for your account, type one in. Just make sure you remember it, set your password, and you are in. After a little hang time, it's gonna tell you, hey, wait about 15 minutes, and you should be able to log in right here. Now, done this a few times, and it doesn't usually take 15 minutes, so I'll type in my email address and my password, click the sign in button, and I am good. Pops right up with terms and conditions. You can accept those. I just don't like where it says, I've read the terms and conditions. You know when it says that, I always feel like I'm lying. I'm like, I didn't really read them, I just accepted them. And we are now at the ADE Connect landing page. Now this is where your base of operations to load your kids into the system will go. This is what makes them eligible to receive funding through something called Class Wallet. Talk about that later. Once you're logged in here, the first place that you wanna go is over there on applications. Click on view applications and we're gonna choose, a, remember ESA program is for a lot of different things. We're gonna use the ESA applicant portal. That's gonna come up and ask for all of your information as the caretaker, the guardian of these children. You wanna fill this in accurately because they're going to ask you to upload some verification documents. Scroll down, click save changes. And your profile is now up to date. If you need to correct anything, each one of these drop downs will allow you to access the individual sections that you filled out. Now, when you click on home, the landscape has changed. Notice we now have this create new application. This is where you can begin to create the application for your students, your children that you're submitting to this program. Now it's going to walk through a series of questions. Best thing I can tell you to do, answer them. I'm not gonna walk through every single one of them unless there's something where I'm like, oh, you might wanna know this, like this guy right here. Uh, it's saying, what what program would you like to, to designate as your primary eligibility? Remember, what is it? Universal, you all screamed it out, right? Universal is what you want because all the other ones are for the previous uses, well, other uses of the ESA funding program. So we'll click on continue and now it's gonna just keep uh, allowing you to go through it. Now it's asking, does your child have a current evaluation IEP from Arizona Public Education. I'm gonna click on no, they do not. By the way, you wanna make sure you are withdrawing them from public education if you're using this, this program, meaning if you're in the ESA and you go enroll for a public education school, you will automatically be pulled out of the ESA program. You wanna be careful with that because if you, you know, sometimes times can overlap and you don't wanna be held responsible for funds because you had them in public school and you're using funds for buying textbooks and you didn't, you, know, you, you get where I'm going, right? It's one or the other. They're either in public education or in parent directed uh, funding through, uh, through this program for homeschool or private school. Now this is where it becomes a little bit of a hassle. I know, you can't just click the button and move on. Uh, you need one of the things that you see right there. I grabbed my electric bill and all you have to do is get it on your computer. I used, um, on, my, on my cell phone, I used Genius Scan. Uh, it's an app you can download. You just take a picture of it, it turns it into a PDF, emailed it to myself, 
and then you uh, then you move right here. So you can see right here, you have to upload, and this is, you're gonna need to do this for every single one of them. So keep that electric bill or whatever you're using handy because every single time you're gonna click on choose file, upload it, along with the student's birth certificate. Yes, you do have to do that. So dig it out of the filing cabinet, take a picture of it with Genius Scan or scan it in using your uh, flatbed scanner or whatever you got and uh, get it on your computer. That's the big one that you're gonna wanna fill in here. I just grabbed some bogus files and selected them and we'll see if that will actually let us get to the next prompt. Ah, good, it does. I'm sure whoever is gonna review this application will be like, what is this? So I'm gonna go in here and fill in my first student. This is your child's name. So I've got my child's information filled out, Mushi Jr., uh, male, we've got date of birth, grade level, all of that. We certify all this is true and obviously it's not because this is a demonstration just to get you familiar with all the prompts that you're going to see going through. Uh, signature, uh, Mushka Demo, which is gonna be the name that, that uh, I've typed in. Submit and I've now added my first student to the program. Whoops, I chose a date that is a little old. It didn't seem old to me. So we'll say 2010, submit, and boom. Mushka Jr. is in the system, or Mushi Jr. is in the system. You can see now it's waiting for the approval by the state. Now, this is this is gonna, it, it, it depends. ESA is a little overwhelmed right now with all the folks coming in, at least they were, uh, last I heard. So once this application is processed, you will have access to the Class Wallet funding system. I'm gonna show that on a different account so that you can get familiar with that in the next video. Everything that you've seen here allows you to go in and get your profile established as the care guardian parent, parent caretaker of this child and then you'll add an application for every single one of the children that you want to participate in this program, right? All good? Let's move on to the next video then.